Great. All right, cool. So you guys see, there's a lot of things I don't understand in life. Okay. The first thing that I don't understand is I don't understand how to tie a tie. Come on. <laughs> right? I, like some of you, you don't believe in me, but for the past 25 years of my life, I have not learned how to tie a tie. It's alright. That's why my solution is getting married first. Yeah! So you have a wife <laughs> that can tie your tie for you. Right? I know! Okay. Well, the problem here is my wife today is not here. So I gotta learn how to tie my tie myself. Right? This is the first tie I ever tied in my life. I'm so proud of myself. Right? <laughs> You see, the second thing that I don't understand is I don't understand how to snap at the right beat. <laughs> when, we're, when we're doing song, they're like, in the second song, it looks like I'm super confident, right? But I'm very nervous in my heart. That's why I'm saying, Brandon, look at me. I gotta see your beat so that I can, I can hit at the right beat. I see, you see, the third thing that I don't understand it's that I don't understand why some people think that pink makes you more manly. Uh, what? A pink? You see, uh, according to uh, Matthew, our uh, dear brother, a pink watch increases your masculinity. It makes you more muscular. That's true. So that's why I have the pink watch. I <laughs> make sure that everything glows, that I can present more manly in front of you guys. But we're talking about how to be a man of God today, right? Yeah. So you see, the problem with this is there's a lot of things you don't understand. But I think one thing that people do not understand is that they do not understand how to read their Bible. Oh. That is one thing that they don't understand. Yeah. People so often have a hard time understanding how to read it. You see, some go into the Bible and looking for a contradiction between the science and the Bible and trying to see if the so-called Word of God is correct or if, uh, if the Bible would make a mistake. Yeah. Some go into the Bible looking for a piece of wisdom and hoping to be a better man. Yeah. There are some other people go into the Bible and quickly lose interest because they think this is just a collection of the stories about random people. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, but in order to understand how to read Bible, we must first understand that Bible is not a science book. If you're looking for a lot of scientific science knowledge about how computer runs, go to computer manual instruction. Don't go to the Bible because that is not what it is for. Yeah. yeah. You know, so and also we have to understand that this is a book about relationship. Yeah. Through the beginning of the chapter to the end of the chapter. If you read Bible with an open mind, it talks only about two things. How to have a relationship with men and how to have a relationship with God. Amen. That is everything that the Bible is talking about. Right. And you say, what about those Bible characters in those random stories? How do I understand them? You see, every single Bible character in the Bible some way represent a stage we are in in our life. Yeah. Right. And when you look at every single one of them, other than Jesus, every single one of them, they are flawed. Yeah. They have a lot of weakness, they have a lot of trouble, yeah. and they, they, they have a lot of stupid mistakes that they have made. Yeah. You see, the Bible specifically put these people into it so that it doesn't discourage you. Mm. Know that, hey, being godly, it's not, it's, something, it's not something that you can never reach. Yeah. Look at Moses. He murdered someone. Have you murdered someone? No, you haven't. So don't tell me that you cannot be godly today. Come on, Dave. Wow. Have you looked at Jeremiah? Jeremiah became the prophet of the nation when he was a teenager. Yeah. Like, don't tell me that you cannot do that as well. Wow. So you see, every Bible character in some way is put in there so that it can help us to overcome the mistake or to overcome the certain, the certain stage in our life True. so that we can learn from them how to be more godly yeah. it is like a mirror reflecting where you are spiritually in your relationship with human and also with god mm -hmm. through the bible in the, in all of the character there will be one one of the character you can find a piece of yourself reflecting in them and what do you have to do to be godly just follow what they do 
So you see, today we're going to look into the Bible, and we're going to see some of the character that is in the Bible. Come on. So my title, the title of my sermon today is, Are You a Victim or Are You a Victor? Wow. Right? Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 56 to 57. Are you, the point number one is, are you a victim or are you a victor? 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 56 to 57. It says, the sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who give us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. What does the scripture talk about? It talks about that God is so victorious that he can even overcome death. You see, when I first become a Christian, I go, wow. There's an almighty God. Yeah. God has all the power, all the knowledge in the world. If I can have God on my side, if I ask for a Ferrari, I must be getting Ferrari, right? <laughs> That's the logic that you're thinking about. Following by the same logic, you go, well, we should also, as a Christian, be victorious. In our lives, we should just be the victor, you know, going through and cutting down every difficulties and every hardship that is coming in our way. But later on, after you become a Christian, you know that it is not the truth. You go, why is this life become even harder after I become a Christian? That doesn't make sense. You see, this is not the, what the Christianity is about. Today, a lot of people go into Christianity, have this with wishful thinking. That, hey, by God, have God on my side, my life will be awesome and incredible. That is not the case. Come on. You see, God, you are in God so that you can learn how to be godly. Right. And that is very different from being in the world. So everything, every single day, God will call you to be holy. And being holy is just like being like God. Wow. It is very difficult to achieve. Yeah. And no wonder that's why you will struggle spiritually. And, but understand that struggle is good. In spiritual uh, uh, in your Christian walk so which apostle can we relate the most people ask who is the apostle that you love the most I would say the Apostle Peter yeah people ask why well simply because I think out of the 12 apostle he made the most mistake yeah. it was always asking for random questions <laughs> and I always get rebuke yeah. <laughs> this guy you know but I, that's why I love him, because I can relate to him. You don't want someone coming here and preach to you because they're so perfect. Yeah. You don't want that. Yeah. You want someone that can relate to you. Yeah. Turn your Bible to John chapter 21, verse 1 to 6. Now we're going to see the end of the John, and we're going to see what is happening with Peter. It says, afterward, Jesus appeared again to his disciple by the Sea of Galilee. All right, so we got to pay attention to this word, again. Mm. So Jesus by this point has resurrected all right so he appeared again so he appeared before okay by the sea of galilee it happened this way simon peter thomas and nathaniel for in Cana in galilee and the son of zabadee and two other disciples were together i'm going out to fish who is saying that simon peter told them and they said we will go with you so they went out and got into the boat by that night they caught nothing early in the morning jesus stood on the shore but the disciple did not realize that it was Jesus. Oh, no. He called out to them, friends, haven't you had any fish? No, they answered. They said, uh, he said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to hurl the net in because of the large number of the fish. You see, after the famous story of Peter denying Jesus for three times, yeah. we all have heard that that Peter denied Christ for three times. We saw the miracles of Jesus raising from the dead yeah. and appear to them again. You know, the funny thing about this is with this time, Jesus has appeared more than three times in front of Peter. So you see, it takes three times for Peter to deny Christ so that it takes three times and more than three times for Christ to come back into, people, uh, into Peter's life. Yeah. We saw the miracle of Jesus raising from the dead, and they appeared in front of the disciple. We would have thought, you know, the disciple would be fully convinced. Oh my gosh, Jesus has appeared to me for more than three times now. I must believe. You would expect them, they would be so fired up and hold on the conviction, Jesus is Lord. Yeah. 
wow, he told us he's gonna raise from the dead, and he actually did. Mm. That is incredible. And you start to see disciples being fired up and went out preaching the good news of Jesus Christ. No, that was not the story in the Bible. What did they do? Instead of go out fishing for fish, instead of go out preaching the good news of Jesus Christ, what did they do? Fishing. Peter says, I feel like fishing today. <laughs> what did the disciples say? Great, I want to fish with you. <laughs> so they all went out fishing. You're like, what is happening? You see, Simon Peter went back to fish. Remember when Jesus first called Simon Peter, what did he say? He said, Simon, follow me. I'm going to make you out to be a fisher of men. True. In the very beginning, Simon Peter is a fisherman. And after all this discouragement, he went back to his old self. He went back to fish. Remember, this is one of Jesus' most trusted disciples. This is the one that Jesus said, I will give you the key of the kingdom of God. This is the most trusted, the closest friend of Jesus Christ. Yeah. This is the one that has seen all the miracles that Jesus has performed. But yeah. what did he do? He went back to fish. What is this? What is happening? You see, I think that Peter has lost what it takes to continuously follow Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And by loss, I'm not referring to the loss of his ability. Yeah. Because Jesus has given them the authority. You see, with Peter, if he wants, he can still try to walk on the water. He's done it before. Mm -hmm. Now for Peter, if he wants to drove out demons, he can still do it. Yeah. Because Jesus has given them the authority. If that, this Peter, he wants to heal disease and sickness, he can still do it. With all the ability that is inside of him, he simply forgot the identity of himself. Wow. He forgot that he is a disciple of Jesus Christ. Wow, you see, this Peter, he's lost. Not in terms of he has lost all of his ability in his spiritual path. By lost, I mean, I'm referring to the loss of heart, yeah. mm -hmm. to the loss of faith. People, a Peter simply forgot what does it mean to be victorious. Mm. You see, in the early, early days of Peter, he walked through with Jesus Christ. He saw victory out of, after victory after victory. True. But it comes to a point where his Lord is putting onto the cross. And he get defeated. He, he get defeated that he forgot what it means to be victorious again. You see, some of us in the church, we also have forgotten what it means to be victorious. Yeah. It is fascinating how little faith that the world has and thinking about how many times that we did not do something because of the ex excuses that we have given to ourselves. And sometimes that can really creep into our spiritual walk. Yeah. You see, the differences between a victor, sorry, a victim and a victor, so often it's not with their ability. You guys are all humans. Yeah. If you want to get jacked up, hit the gym. You guess what? You you guys can all get fit. Yeah. So often, the difference between a victim and a victor, it's not with their ability, wow. but with their attitude. Right. Wow. You see, a victim is constantly looking for a reason why he cannot do this. But victor is always looking for method, how he can do this. Oh, sure, and so often, you know, in our Christian walk, we feel like a victim, victim and we forgot how to gain victory. It's not that you cannot. It's just about, it's just you forget about the fact that you simply can. You see, the world is a very toxic place. The world likes to place urgent things over important things. That's true. You see, a lot of time you look at the student trying to study the Bible with them. You know, there are always urgent things coming into places. They go, hey, come to church. Well, you guess what? I, I, I got my assignment to do. I come to church. Well, I got my friends to hang out. You know, in the world, urgent things always come into your life. And people tend, the, the society is teaching you always placing the urgent things before the important things. Yeah. I was asking people about this. I go, you know, with the, all, all the assignment for that hours, you know, that you can possibly use to find God, you know, after 10 years, 
you won't remember that one hour that you have lost yeah. in looking for Christ. All you will remember is how Christianity would actually change your life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In 10 years time, you wouldn't think about that assignment because you didn't get 99, you get 95. You wouldn't remember that four points. Yeah. You'll be grateful because how much work God has done in your life. True. You see, I want to ask you, what are you guys fighting at the end of the day? So many of us, we're waiting for things to happen. And we're always constantly placing urgent things in front of the important things. Right. The most important thing is this. What do you do with your life? What is the purpose of your life? Where are you going after you die? What are you living for? These are the most crucial, important right. questions that One we thing. have to figure out. Otherwise, after 10 years of you working in the crucial things, uh, uh, working in the urgent things, you look back into your life, you achieve nothing. Yeah, that's true. Ten years ago, you don't know where your direction is. Ten years later, you also don't know where your direction is. Mm. Is that the life that you want? I want to lift up Jason, you see. Hi, Jason! We have been studying the Bible with Jason. You know, the boy is out there, you know. Okay. And so we start talking about it. There's being a Christian by no means, it's not, it's not easy. There's a lot of things you have to overcome. Yeah. The hardest thing is placing God number one. Yeah. yeah. You see, with Jason, the thing that I appreciate him the most is that he look at the scripture, he go, this is so hard, but I'm going to do it. Wow! Welcome, Jason. Welcome, Jason. This is so hard, but I'm, I'm, I'm just going to do it. Wow. Like, he, he's like, this is so hard. Dean, can you pray for me? I need a prayer so that I can do it. Wow. You see, this is the, the man that we're looking for. Yeah. This is the man that God is looking for. That they don't find excuses of why they cannot do it. Come on. They are finding the method how they can do it. Right. I want to ask you, are you a victim or a victor today? Are you waiting for rescue or are you seeking for change for God? Mm -hmm. See, to those who are studying the Bible, I want to encourage you. You know, a lot of time you're studying the Bible, you start thinking about, I want to, you, you know this is, this is good. You go, you know what, I want to study the Bible, become a Christian, you know this is the right path to go. Yeah. But then you start finding a lot of excuses. You start focusing on why I cannot do it, instead of how I can do it. Mm. I want to encourage you, today, focus on the how. We all have the ability inside of us. God called us in this moment to seek Him with all of His heart. He believes in you. Yeah. He believes that you have the ability to seek Him with all of your heart. Mm. See, to those who say, you know, after studying the Bible, they go, I want to seek God with all of my heart. Stop pulling excuses. Yeah. If you go, you know what, Brandon, I want to seek God with all of my heart, but I have exam. Well, think, figure it out. Figure it out. Study overnight, but place God as your priority. Yeah. Stop pulling excuses because you're not going to achieve anything in your life. Right. How many times have you pulled excuses in your life and then you end up going nowhere? Yeah. Don't repeat the pattern again. Mm -hmm. To those disciples, who says they want to be fruitful? You know, Christian here, go and make disciple of all nations. You go, I want to be fruitful. I want God to use me powerfully. Stop putting excuses. Yep. No, sometimes, you know, one of the brothers come to me. I go, hey, how's the study with, blah, blah, blah. let's say, uh, Bobby. Uh, let's just use that. Oh, there's a Bobby right <laughs> But yeah, no, no offense, yeah. <laughs> say, hey, how was the study with uh, Bobby? How was it? Oh, it was good. Great. When was the next study? Oh, it's next week. What? Next week? Why not tomorrow? Uh, because you got this to do and that to do, this to do and that to do. You know what you're doing? You are pulling excuses for them. Oh no. You see the problem here is, let me stop you right here. People pull out excuses because they're faithless. Right. Yeah. They don't have faith in them. Wow. But as a disciple, it is your job to be faithful. Come on. Yeah. So stop pulling excuses for them. But think about, help them figure out the how instead of cover up their faithlessness. You know, I want to I wanna lift up, you know, a brother in uh, Sydney, Australia. His name is Wayne. Come on, Wayne. Wayne. I said, Wayne, do you know that you want to become a Christian? He said, yes. I'm like, Whoa, this guy, awesome. That was later on, you know, into Bible study. I go, Wayne, that's great. Um, do you think that this is the right decision? He go, yes. 
I go, wow, that, that is incredible. I go, when? When do you want to be baptized and actually become a disciple? He said, well, maybe later on. I said, why? Why do you wait? He said, it's winter. The water is too cold. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get sick. Wow. Oh, <laughs> Let me stop you right there. You know, like, what a punk, you know, stop it. Like, what are you? You know, some of, some of the time, like, the excuses that people pull out, you know, it's just weird. <laughs> then you go, hey, let me stop you out there. This is the challenge I want to give it to you, Wayne. Go home today, figure out what kind of Wayne do you want to be. Wow. Do you want to be the Wayne who is stuck for the past 10 years? Or are you looking for the Wayne that is raised, for, uh, raised to the new life? Wow. I want you to pray. I want you to pray until you can send me a message and tell me your decision. And then we'll go from there. That night, Wayne is a very spiritual man. No, so he went back, wrestled with God about this winter water is too cold thing. <laughs> he prayed, started from 10 o'clock all the way to 2 o'clock. Wow. He sent a message to me and Dean, I'm ready. Wow. You see, some of the time, that is the attitude that, I, that we need to have. Yeah. If you are a victim today, it's very easy to stop, stop a spot. When people give you a challenge, are you looking for excuses? Or are you looking for the way how to do it? Mm -hmm. You see, this is one of the challenge I want to give it to you. Imitate Wayne. Imitate Jesus mm, yeah. in the Gethsemane. Imitate the attitude of, I'm going to pray until I break. Yeah. And that will change your life. Come on. Yeah. Point number two. More than the fisherman. Come on, Come on. Genesis chapter 19, verse 12 to 22. Before we talk about more than a fisherman, I would like to jump into another Bible character. His name is Lot. Now, Lot is the cousin of, uh, 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 it's the cousin, it, Abraham is the uncle of Lot. That tells you about their relationship. You know, I sort of just lost a word right there. But Genesis chapter 19, verse 12 to uh, uh, 22. So in this scripture, God is about to destroy Gomorrah and Sodom because of their weakness. If you go there. The two men said to Lot, do you have anyone else here? Sons-in-law, sons and daughters, anyone else in the city who belongs to you? Get them out of here because we're going to destroy this place. The outcry to the Lord against his people is so great that he sent us to destroy it. So Lot went out and spoke to his daughter, spoke to his son-in-law, who were pledged to marry his daughters. He said, hurry and get out of the place because the Lord is about to destroy the city. But his son-in-law thought he was joking. With the coming of dawn, the, the angels urged Lot, saying, hurry, take your wife and your two daughters who are here, or you will be swept away when the city is punished. When he hesitated, the man grasped his hand and the hand of his wife and of his two daughters and led them safely out of the city. For the Lord was merciful to them. As soon as they, uh, he had brought them out, one of them said, Flee for your lives. Wow. Don't look back. Don't stop anywhere in the plan. Flee to the mountains or you will be swept away. But Lot said to them, No, my Lord, please. My servant has found favor in your eyes, and you have shown great kindness to me in sparing my life. But I can't flee to the mountain. This disaster would overtake me, and I would die. Look. Here's a town near enough to run to, and it is small, it is tiny. Let me flee to it. It is very small, isn't it? Then my life will be spared. He said to them, very well, I'll grant this request too. I will not overthrow the town you speak of, but flee there quickly, because I, do not, I cannot do anything until you reach it. This is why the town was called Zor. Zor. Zor in the Bible, it means more tiny. You see here you have the story of an angel coming down and telling Lot to go to the mountain. Mm -hmm. Yet instead of yet instead inside of Lot's car, he go, I can never reach the mountain. Let me just settle down at this little town called Zor. You see, most people in their spiritual walk, they failed not because they aim too high and miss. Most people fail because they aim too low and they actually hit it. Yeah, that's true. And they're satisfied with it. And they think it is good enough. Let me explain this for you. Sometimes we can bring this into church culture. It is all over the Christianity culture today. 
a, a bunch of people who are aiming too low for God. Yeah, that's Explain true. Explain this to you. You see, you have a lot of Christians. They aim too low in their relationship with right. God. They go, you know what? I, I will go to church on Sunday. That is good enough for me. Have you ever met those Christians? Yeah. yeah. They just go to church on Sunday and that's it. They don't know their Bible. They don't even pray. They simply go to church like going to a meeting once a week. Yeah. Have you met any of those Christians? Mm -hmm. And some of the Christians, you know, they're aiming too low in their righteousness. Mm -hmm. They're highly emphasizing the grace of God. Not realizing in Romans chapter 6 verse 1, it says, Shall we keep on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. They're emphasizing too much about the grace of God. Come on, and they're sinning all they want. They go, you know what? God's grace. I am righteous. This is good. Some of the people, they're aiming too low in their commitment level. Yeah. In their fellowship. They come to fellowship, they're expecting to take, but they're not expecting to give. Mm. Some of the Christians, they're aiming too low in their love. In John chapter 13, 34 to 35, it says, A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you. By this everyone will know that you are my disciple if you love one another. They're aiming too low in their love. People go to lecture and going to church, they see no differences between it. They're just aiming too low. Come on. Yeah. And some of the people are aiming too low in their Bible knowledge. You see, they're they're becoming ten years become a Christian for ten years, never finish their Bible. Oh my gosh. Why would you call yourself a Christian? You don't even know the knowledge about God. Yeah. You see, there are so many people, they're just aiming too low. Yeah. yeah. They hit it. They go, wow, you know what? It's all good. This is what it means by being a Christian. Mm -hmm. I'm a Christian. I'm saved. You see, sometimes we can let our standard define what Christian is instead of using what the Bible says right. define what Christianity truly is. Is. You see, there's a problem in Christianity today. People are aiming too low. Yeah. yeah. By living this way, by aiming too low, we start to deliver a message to the world. Yeah. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, it says, You are the letter of Christ. You are written with the holy ink. When you walk outside, people see you, they're just supposed to see God. Yeah. But you have this low standard Christian walking around. They are the ladder for the world. They tell people how Jesus is supposed to look like. He's not this super loving Jesus, but he's a drunk. Like, you know, he do drugs. He's slapping around. He has no life. He has no, he has no drives. He's selfish. He's mean. You see, this is the Christian image that today Christianity has bring into the world. And it is very sad. Yeah. Guys, look. The message that they deliver, it is okay to be uncommitted to the Lord. Yeah. That's why you have a bunch of people, you know, they, they come to church for once and twice, they think, I'm a Christian. No. And according to the Bible, it never said of once. Come on. It is okay to keep on living in sin. That is the message that they bring out. How many Christians are falling into sin? More and more of them, they are living a sinful life. It is okay to put, not put God number one. It is okay to not seek Him with all of your heart. Yeah. And that is the image and the message that today Christianity have, spent, have spread out into the world. No wonder people don't want to become a Christian. Mm -hmm. What is the differences of me being a Christian versus you? Yeah. As a Christian. If I don't become a Christian, I might live off better than you. You see, that is the message that Christianity has sent into the world. You see, the problem with the, all these people is they stop realizing what is actually in the Bible, the message that is in the Bible. Matthew chapter 22, verse 33. Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind. Yeah. This is the first and the greatest commandment that is in the Bible. Yeah. Let me ask you, what does all mean? Everything. Everything. Mm. That is the most important commandment, yet how many Christians are following it today? Mm. Let's go to another, in Revelation chapter 3, verse 16. Come on, Dean. It says, so because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I'm about to spit you out of my mouth. 
You see, somehow the lukewarmness in Christendom is okay today. Yeah. I don't get it. According to the scripture, God is disgusted by you. He wants to spit you out. What are you doing to it? You see, sometimes we can also let our own standard define what God's purpose is for our life. If you go to John chapter 21, 15 to 17. John chapter 21, 15 to 17. It says, when they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than this? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. So often we go, why does Jesus ask Simon three times? You see, Peter denied Jesus three times. Yeah. Jesus appeared to Peter more than three times. And Jesus asked the question three times. Because Jesus wanted to remind Simon Peter his purpose all over again. Simon, what are you doing? Stop taking care of your fish. Start taking care of my sheep. Yeah. You see, in the eyes of God, when he looked at Peter, he saw so many things. He saw Peter as his shepherd, take care of my sheep. He saw Peter as his leaders. I, that's why I will give you the key to the kingdom of God. He saw Peter as one of his apostles. He saw Peter as the guy that can change the world. Peter saw Jesus saw so much in Peter, but what did Peter saw in, in himself? Peter seen nothing but a fisherman. That's why he went back to fish. You see, today, God sees so much in you, you just have to choose to ignore what it is. Some of us, we choose to ignore what God has seen. In ourselves. Come on. I think about some of the time the grace, you know, it's very understand it's very hard to understand what grace actually is. Yeah. I think about myself, you know, back in the day. Uh, when I was getting baptized, you know, years ago. Oh, so good to say years ago. Anyway. <laughs> when I got baptized years ago, you know, they straight up, you know, I was just first China, a Chinese man, you know, in the church. Yeah. They somehow already have this little plan set up for me. They go, you know what, you're going to be evangelizing the China. Woo! Come on! Uh, I just became a Christian. Can you slow down? <laughs> no, I think, you know, and it's very funny. And then when I was not doing very good spiritually, you know, Sean just go, you know what, I want you to lead a campus Bible talk. I'm like, okay, I can do that. Um, every two weeks, you know, leading a 10 or 15 minutes live discussion and Bible discussion, I can do that. That's easy. And then uh, Joe started to go, you know what, uh, I want to I wanna have you to lead a Bible talk on Friday night. That's where I started to lead all the Hong Kong girls, you know, in our <laughs> Friday nights. And uh, it wasn't going very good. <laughs> hey, no. I wasn't very spiritual. I was upsetting uh, sister left and right, and they stormed out of the house in front of the visitors, you know. <laughs> you can see how bad that gets. You know, at that time, Joe goes, you know what? I want to give you more. I want to have you to lead the East region. I want you to lead a region. I love it. <laughs> and then you see the sister just storm out of the house and you want me to lead a region? Yeah, I'll take it. So I start taking over and leading a region. And you know, in the beginning of this year, you go, you know what, Dean? Would you like to lead a church? <laughs> now see, the battle... <laughs> There's a, there's a, this spiritual battle that is going inside of me. Come on, babe. You see, the battle of me, it's always seen, the battle of me has always been seen what people and what God have seen yeah. in me. Because yeah. it is very hard. You see, I don't get it until one day a sister come up to me. And he go, Dean, Pastor Dean, somehow just like that. <laughs> Pastor Dean, I'm out. 
I, I think there's this pride inside of me. Don't want to. <laughs> anyway, Pastor Dean, where do you see I'm at in the church? Where do you see my role in this church? You see, I never get, I never get why the battle is so hard inside of me until this point when the sister asked. Me. And the sister was incredible. I see him, you know. I see a lot of things. I go, wow. What do I see in you? I see everything in you to become a leader. I see everything in you to become the person you always wanted to be. You see, but the question is not about what I see or what God sees, right? Yeah. yeah. The question is about what do you see? Wow. What do you see in yourself? Because you see, they can have a, a hundred people coming to you and saying, you can do it. Yeah. But if you talk to yourself that I cannot do it, none of, none of, those, none of those comments actually matters. Yeah. Yeah. You see, God and people have seen so much inside of us. But it is us that are always refusing, refusing to believe in what people see. Yeah. Yeah. Coming to a landing, in Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 to 19. Come on. It says, Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Teach them to obey everything that I've taught you, and surely I'll be with you always till the very end of this age. You see, after Jesus appeared himself for multiple times, he finally convinced his disciple to see what he sees in them. Yeah. yeah. Go make disciple. It did not say go make disciple just in Hong Kong Island. It did not say go make disciple just in China. It did not say go make disciple in Asia area. It says go make disciple of all nations. Come on. Think about how hard it is for 2,000 years ago. They don't have phone. They don't have WhatsApp. They don't have WeChat. They don't have Facebook. They don't have plan flying all around. They don't have train. They don't have car that they can drive away. Yeah. But guess what? In Colossians chapter 1 verse 23, it says, if you continue in your faith, establish and firm and do not move from the hope held out in the gospel, this is the gospel that you heard that has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven, wow. of which I, Paul, have become a servant. Every creature under heaven has heard the gospel. How did they do that? They walk and preach everywhere that they go. What are the excuses for us today? You see, the apostles bring the gospel all over the world because they finally see what God have, has seen in them. But the question really is today, where do you want to go from here? As all of us sitting here, are you a victim? Or are you a victor? Are you seeking for excuses? Or are you looking for change? Are you embracing the call from God to go to the mountain? Or are you trying to be like Lot? Just settling down for this little door. You go, the mountain is too high. I can never reach it. You see, I want to give you an encouragement. I see what is in you, my friend. It is so much, and it is so bright. And God sees what is in you, my friend. It is so good, and it is so divine. But my friend, the problem is not what I see. The problem is not what God sees. But you got to be the one who wants to see it. Yeah. yeah. So the final question today is, today, my friend, what actually do you see? To God be the glory. Thank wow. you.